Discovery Bay is a really important area for shorebirds in particular. It's internationally significant, especially for sandling, which are ocean beach dependent migratory shorebirds. They migrate all the way from northern Siberia um, right down to this coastline to feed and forage and rest and build up that energy to go back and breed. So it's really critical for that species. But it's also really important for our local shorebirds. There's lots of knowledge from different stakeholders and different people that work in the local area and work outside of the local area and it's really important to bring all that knowledge and expertise together. Through funding support provided by the Victorian and Australian governments, we've been able to implement management strategies and monitoring plans associated with this site. What that means is putting ecologists out in the field, looking at these species, finding out um, where they are, where they're occurring, what habitats they're using, and to understand the populations better and what things might be threatening those species. That is important for understanding that our management strategies are working and that we're actually improving or maintaining at least the condition of this important site. Because the ecologists have been out on site more often in the last few seasons, we're seeing a number of bird species that typically haven't been found here before. Uh, the Australasian bittern has been found here, the breeding pair of magpie geese, and uh, probably the ground parrot is one of the more significant observations that we've found here. All of those uh, are occurring in and around that long swamp wetland complex, which has recently been restored by the good folk at Nature Glenelg Trust. Long swamp has always been pretty much a permanent wetland uh, until probably the early 1900s when an uh, artificial cut was put through the sand dunes. And the result of that was that areas of the, the wetland behind me and also further down towards the Glenelg River were, were drying over time. And that meant that there wasn't enough habitat available for the birds that would have used it in the past and the fish. So we worked with the community and we we implemented what we called a trial at the time, 7,000 sandbags with lots of volunteers over 10 days and we managed to, to stop the water flowing out. We're losing a lot of habitat, particularly wetlands. In this part of the world, between 50 to 90% of our wetlands have been lost, so any opportunity we've got to put a little bit back is, is great for a lot of our threatened species which are wetland dependent. The area that we've recreated here in terms of the aquatic habitat, it's now uh, a permanent sort of refuge site for fish. So having an area like this that holds water uh, all year round, like it did once upon a time before the artificial outlet was, was cut, is really critical for, for a lot of aquatic species. And I guess another key factor was the increased connectivity that we've been able to achieve throughout the wetlands. That's enabled a lot of uh, native fish species to start to access other areas of the wetland and um, colonise uh, yeah, new, new habitat. We've actually seen juvenile short fin eels occurring throughout the central area of Long Swamp, which we hadn't previously recorded. Uh, and that obviously indicates that they're now utilising that natural flow path, which is of course via uh, the Glenelg River Estuary and Eel Creek. So I guess across Western Victoria and even into South East South Australia, there's obviously a long history of artificial drainage, which has had a significant impact on the amount of aquatic habitat available for things like fish and frogs. So having Long Swamp in the broader region now listed as a Ramsar site, is really critical and important in terms of ensuring the monitoring that we've been undertaking continues and we can, yeah, just continually reassess how the fish are responding to all the changes that have been occurring.